Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we sat down and we did a small talks episode on leading with your heart. Today, for episode number 364, <clears throat> we are going to talk about how to use the law of attraction with dating. So why are we doing this episode? We want to start with why at all times. Let's provide a little context here. So first and foremost, Kev and I, early in our journey, we did not fully understand the law of attraction and how it works. And we had both listened to and or read The Secret. I think you watched the documentary. I did. um, And I had read the book and also watched that as well. And the law of attraction, I think, is a very difficult thing to fully grasp the power of it and as you know if you listen to the show we have you know the pmes system of physical mental emotional spiritual we understand how to manifest things into reality but today we want to talk specifically about you're not going to attract what you want you're going to attract who you are especially when it comes to not only the person's places things and ideas but persons in particular your friends the people you date, you really are going to filter out those who are not congruent and magnetize those who are, but only if you have the courage to be yourself, your authentic self. Yeah. I, again, I sometimes get messages from people asking about relationships. And I think one of the reasons is because we talk about it so much, like we couldn't be lying about our relationships. Like we talk about it so often on the podcast right. and the, like, how do I get my dream relationship? You become the person capable of attracting and sustaining that relationship. That's what it is, filters and magnets. And I think with a lot of people, and I know we're going to get into this, but like, let's just use a number scale. Like nobody's a number, but let's just use a number scale. Say you're a three out of 10 in this number scale and you attract somebody who is a three out of 10. And then within a year, you're a five out of 10 and they didn't change. Right. That's when tension starts to be, get created. You were at the same level when the law of attraction worked, right? right? That's, maybe that was your dream relationship at the time, but now you're capable of more because you are more. Now you're capable of more because you're aware of more. Maybe, now you're capable of more because you have the ability to continue to grow and evolve. And right. that's when the things really start to happen. Like, I, and I think there's some common themes when this happens. Like, let's say you met your significant other at a party and for that entire summer, you guys party together all the time and now you don't party anymore and your partner still wants to. That's one thing. Right. Say you both got out of a really bad breakup. That's going to bring you down anyway. So you're mm. not going to be the most secure, shining version of yourself when you're first entering that relationship. And that's why I think going back to like making sure that you're healed, quote unquote, making sure that you're practicing self-love and filling up your own cup is the best way to get into the relationship that you want. I think one of the things that is super important here, and I bring this up all the time, but it's so relevant. And that's why I do it is the top five regrets of the dying. There's two of them. One, I wish I lived a life true to myself and not what others expected of me that takes tremendous courage because when you want to stay in rapport with certain people that you love and care about, it's difficult to stay true to yourself sometimes. And we just talked to Dr. Jen Esker about that. And number two is I wish I had the courage to express my true feelings. That's not the second regret. It's the third one. But the point is, is two of the biggest ones are those two. I wish I lived a life true to myself, not what others expected of me. And I wish I had the courage to express my true feelings. I believe that both of those are so difficult because we're trying to stay in rapport with those we love. And what happens when, like Kevin mentioned, one of you is growing at an exponential trajectory and one of you is not. So we'll just give an example. So we're 360 episodes or so in. We are aware of far more than we were at the beginning of this journey. And as a matter of fact, it's, it's hard to say this, but it is true to a certain extent. I don't even know if I would hang out with me three years ago. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I would definitely help me three years ago. I would definitely mentor me three years ago, but I don't know if I'd be buddies with me three years ago. I certainly wouldn't date me three years ago. And, and I know that sounds weird to say, but 
if you are into growth, you cannot grow without changing fundamentally. That's just not possible. If you're going to grow, you have to change. You have to evolve. We know that. And so the person's places, things, and ideas that you once attracted, if they're not on the same trajectory, you're naturally going to start filtering those out or you're going to start filtering yourself. Yeah. And that's not sustainable. Right. But not if you, if you have like a goal that requires you to be you, which you exactly. do. Any, right. any goal, like if you're setting a goal, it requires you to be yourself. I, I just think that there are some common themes. And again, there are two answers, the easy one and the right one. And, but the problem is like, sometimes the easy one isn't very easy. And sometimes you don't know if the right one's the right one. So I know it's not that cut and dry, but like, I know a lot of people who are kind of waiting in their relationship for like something to happen. It's almost like they are on the fence. Right. They're waiting for something really good to happen or really bad to happen. And it's like, that's the, the basis on whether or not they continue the relationship. We see this constantly between clients, our past selves, you know, it, it's like you said, there's two trains of thought here. There's one side of the fence, which is I'm going to stick this out and see if we can grow together instead of apart. And then the other side is I'm going to leave this person and stay true to what I believe is best. And both have risks. On one side of the fence, the risk is ending up in a relationship that is not the relationship of your dreams. And eventually, you know, being two, five, or 10 years down the road, regretting staying with this person. But it is also possible that you end up making those positive changes and growing together. And so when you make the, when do you make the decision to either leave or stay, it's, it's, it's very difficult to understand when it is to leave. And, and no one can know that other than you, but I will say there's risks of each. So on one end, there's the risk of ending up regretting staying with the person. On the other end, there's the risk of ending up regretting. What if you leave that person and then five years later, you realize that they were better to you than you thought? Yeah. All growth requires risk. And I mean, I can tell you wholeheartedly at this point in my life, the best decision I ever made was leaving my last intimate relationship because it was not right for me. And the only way I really figured that out finally was getting clear on my core values. And we were on a mastermind recently. I mentioned that, but when I realized that we don't have similar core values, I realized that that, that gave me clarity on a quantifiable way for me to be able to say, you know what? No, this is never going to work. And so I think asking yourself the question, will I regret it if I stay? Figure out what your intuition says about that. And then ask yourself the question, will I regret it if I leave? Now, if your answer is I might regret it on each, then, then maybe there's some more exploring to do. But the only wrong answer is to sit back and wait without changing something. I think, you're, I think everybody has a default. So like if one of your biggest fears is being single forever, it's going to be far harder for you to leave an unserving relationship. It just is. Because it's the devil you know is better than the devil you don't in many cases. If your biggest fear is being caged by somebody, you're more, more likely than not going to leave. Right. Right. What, what of your human needs are being met? What of your love languages are being met? And how, how highly do you rate those? Like we've talked about this before. You know the couples that fight all the time, but they're super physical with each other. Right. Right. Like they're just having sex all the time. They fight and have sex, fight and have sex. Maybe the physical touch is that most important thing to them. Right. But I also have talked to people where they're afraid to be alone. They're afraid to be 45 and single, you know, so they might be more willing to like, if you don't think you're going to get a meal again, you're going to settle for any meal. Like, Oh, you know, I'd really like that steak, but right now I don't, the bread's better than nothing. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. But I would ask them how much growth have you done or like how much have you grown since the beginning? How much has your partner grown since the beginning? Because I do think there's a fear, like, can I get what I want? Like, am I able to attract that person? Yes, if you're that person. I had a client reach out to me yesterday and she asked me a very simple question, which is how do you know when to build credibility and how do you know when you're just tooting your own horn too much? 
And that was a great question because I think I struggle with that at times. And I said, it depends who you're talking to. E's and M's. E's won't listen to you until you capture their heart. M's won't listen to you until you capture their mind. If you're talking to an M, you've got to tell the credentials. You've got you to talk about the results. You've got to talk about the outcomes. E's care about experiences. M's care about results. E's care about the process. M's care about the, the outcome. And what's interesting about this, and the reason I bring this up, is because I kind of had a breakthrough here where it's like I had to quantify my core values in order to finally know in my mind what was or was not right. So it's almost like my heart already knew and my intuition already knew, but my mind needed to get on board. And I couldn't do that until I put numbers to it because I'm so numbers oriented. And so I got to rate my core values from zero to 10, how much I embody them and then how much my partner embodied them. And I went, oh my God, like it, th this, this is not right. I can see it quantifiably. So if you're an E out there, Okay. Maybe you're afraid to be alone. Maybe you're afraid that the, the, your true love isn't out there. Maybe you're afraid of the dating scene or social anxiety. Okay. Be careful of that. If you're an M and you're out there, maybe you're justifying something that isn't right for you. And so I think whether you're an E or an M, do the number thing. Like Kevin mentioned, like you, you said three versus five. Like, okay, if one of your core values is personal growth, let's just say this, because this is kind of why we're talking about this. We have several people in our lives that we've realized are with partners that are not as growth oriented as them. That's fine. But let's, let's put it on a scale so that we can get your mind right. But then let's use your intuition outside of a fearful state, an abundance love state and say, okay, is this right for me? So I think the right question for your heart is, will I regret this if I don't change? And I think the right question for your mind is, where am I on the growth scale from zero to 10 versus where I want to be, where I used to be and where I am now? And try to be honest with yourself. And then rate your partner as well. Because if they're on a much less of a growth trajectory, it's going to create tension. At least this way you'll be aware of it and be able to navigate it more effectively. Well, and I think the other thing too is like, this is something that I see happen pretty often. So one of my questions is always like, okay, why are you with the person? Like, what is it about the person that you like? Like, tell me about the good things. Right. And it's always like, well, he or she is nice. They're supportive. They're this, they're this. Okay, I understand that but I don't think you're giving yourself credit for what you're capable of attracting. You're not the old you who just had to take the first person that came along. Of course they're supportive. You wouldn't talk to them if you, if they weren't right. Like that's like saying, Oh yeah, I bought a car and it has three, four tires. You never say that. Tell me about your car. Yeah. I bought it the other day. It's got four wheels. <laughs> right. Yeah, cool. and it goes. What a car is. right. You would never accept less because you've leveled up. I, I, and this is a breakthrough for me in this moment. I've never thought about this before, but I think that's a problem for people. Kev, this is the issue, man. Intrinsic value versus, this is the honest issue. It's very hard for people with big hearts to articulate to themselves what I'm about to say, because it sounds so hardcore. Everyone is intrinsically equal, but they're kind of not in terms of the value they can provide to your life. It's so difficult. This is so difficult. On one train of thought, you have this ridiculous meritocracy of like, is this person unbelievable in all of these tangible, measurable ways versus intrinsic value? Everyone has equal intrinsic value. Everyone has equal potential in certain regards. Like we're all, for lack of better phrasing, God's children. Seriously, from a spiritual sense, I don't think I'm better than anyone else. And I don't think anyone else is better than me. From a tangible place, I do think I'm better for specific people. Right. So, and that's the interesting thing. I'll just use a, a specific example. Let's say you're a person who really wants to be successful in their future in business and fitness. I am wholeheartedly more valuable to you than if you don't. That doesn't make me right or wrong, but it does make me right for you. And so it's very difficult for us to measure human relationships because because we have this disconnect between meritocracy 
and wholehearted, holistic, intrinsic value. And I think it's the dance between these two extremes. Because if you're out there right now, you've had past partners probably. The truth of the matter is, is that some of those partners were more right for you than others, correct? Yeah. And I, same with me, same with you. That's the measurable, tangible side. But on the other side of the coin, those people were wonderful people and you loved them most likely to some extent. How do you navigate the heart and the head? And how do you find someone who captures not just your heart, but also your soul, your mind, your emotions, and your phys physique? Like, sexual attraction there's another piece of this too like okay let's just talk tangibly here good looking versus less good looking typically the law of attraction works well there too you know angelina jolie and brad pitt it is what it is these are extreme examples but the point is is there's a reason for it and i think understanding the reasons is the only way you're going to hyper consciously be able to actually make a choice that's right for you well, you got to understand the reason at the end, the goal. And dude, I think that's where a lot of people, like I was on a podcast today. Great questions. Dylan asks great questions. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions was, how do you go about a relationship now versus like five years ago? Fire. Right. And it's like, oh, geez, back five years ago, the goal of my relationship was to stay in a relationship. That, that was all it was. <laughs> And right. if that's the goal, you don't have to do anything different. Like if you and I decide we want to run a race, right? What's the difference in training between running the race and winning the race? Do you want to be in the fight or do you want to win the fight? I could train you for a fight right now. Right. Training you to win that fight is completely different. It's completely so different. You either want a successful relationship or you want a relationship. And if you want a successful relationship, that requires a different level of mate. That requires a different level of a partner, but that requires a different level of you first. Right. And let's say you do have a genuine ambition to achieve a specific goal, okay? That is going to require you to do certain things, learn certain things, hang out with certain people, develop certain skills. What I think people don't understand, I'm going to use a, a specific example that I think people will, will understand. Um, but it's, it's a challenging one to wrap your head around. And, and, and I've always tried to figure this out. And that's why this is super contemplative. This is a fire episode. So I'll never forget when I first read, and I don't know if this is true, but I do believe that it is, that, that Giselle wanted Tom, to quit, Tom Brady to quit football. And what I find really fascinating and what bothered me a little bit about that and I'm not judging them, but from an outside perspective, it's like you want him to quit the very thing that made him Tom Brady. Tom Brady's love of football and desire to be the best quarterback and best leader and best teammate and best you know, mentor that he can be is the reason he's Tom Brady, which by the way, Giselle, is the, probably the reason why you were attracted to him, or at least part of it, right? And so if Tom Brady wants to be the best quarterback of all time, He's going to have to be a tremendous leader. He's going to have to surround himself with the best players. He's going to have to be under the best coach. He's going to have to do all these things. Aristotle says we are what we repeatedly do. And so if you take away the end goal from Tom football, the reason, will he still be Tom Brady? And that's always been a fascinating concept to me. Like I've been in relationships before where my girlfriend loved that I was in great shape, but didn't love that I woke up every morning to go to the gym. It's like, it, you can't want the result and, and enjoy the outcome. You can't enjoy the fruit if you don't want also the root. I'll never forget when I first showed up at Emilia's place for the very first time, her parents have worked their butt off and they have a beautiful home. And I went, oh my goodness, this place is gorgeous. The very first word she said to me is, my parents worked their ass off. And I was so grateful for that because I can tell she cares more about the work ethic than the material stuff. She, and, and I knew in that moment that I hadn't been with people who care more about the character trait underneath the thing than the thing. And so we have to understand that who we are is a byproduct of what we think, say, do, feel, and believe. And all of that has to do with our ambition. It really does. It just has to do with 
our dreams and our goals. Yeah. And this is a hard, it's a hard conversation. It's a hard topic. It's a hard episode because wherever you are in your relationship might be completely different than somebody else. It's, it's probably different than Alan and I, it's probably different than you were three years ago. But I, I just think at the end of the day, like, first of all, you have to decide like, does your partner want the best relationship? If you said to your partner, Hey, it's important to me that you and I continue to grow and learn at similar rates, because I know that we can pour into each other at a deeper level when we do that. Mm -hmm. Are you interested in that? Because if you're not, that's nothing against you, but that's not what I'm about. Right. Right. And that's fine. That's fine. But I think the other problem is, I think if you're super into personal development and your partner's not, it's your job to get them into it to a degree. Now you don't have to force them into it, but like, yeah, inspire with your own example. I'm never going to suggest to anybody that we should go skydiving, right? Ever. Because that's my fear. I don't know anything about it. It's not my, I have no interest in doing it. Why would I ever bring it up? Right. Right. If your partner has no idea, if they say like, I don't, I'm not going to do personal development. It's stupid. Like, what do you get? Okay. Fine. Fine. It's your job to say, Hey, I heard a fire podcast episode the other day. They talked about the love languages. I think that would really benefit us. Okay, right. cool. Um, if you're a woman, you know, I don't really feel like I'm getting my quality time need met and your boyfriend might say well i don't think i'm getting my physical touch need met okay why don't we meet in the middle if we spend more quality time together more than likely more physical touch is going to happen right, right? right at the end of the day like the point of personal development in your relationship is to make your relationship better to make both of you happier so you can pour into each other and then have a better relationship and have a better life if your relationship is for any other reason other than to get better and have the best relationship you can have you're in a, a strange part and you're, you're going to attract that too. Like if you're a level three, and again, numbers are sub subjective. Right. But if you go all in on yourself, you could be a, a six a year later. If your partner doesn't go all in on themselves, they might be a three or a three and a half. You have to judge their progress and you have to weigh that against your core values. Like that's where it gets personal. And right, there's right. not really much I can say to help you in that position. That's up to you. Well, you've heard me say this plenty of times and I, I repeat it because I think it's so important and I wish I knew it too. I think that all relationship challenges come down to two things, whether it's a friendship or a business partnership, goals in conflict or core values in conflict. Kevin and I spend so much time together because we have very similar mission, AKA goals and dreams and very, very similar core values. And then we do have complementary strengths and weaknesses, which is wonderful to me. That's what, that's what a great relationship is. It's a copacetic win-win. You know, I don't know if you've, the, there's a biological term of copacetic versus parasitic. Parasitic relationship is, you know, one of the organisms is a parasite on the other, like a leech. Okay. Now I know this is, this is a little hardcore if you're talking about relationships, but one of them is leeching off the other. Whereas what, what's the shark that um, one of the fish cleans the shark for the shark, but also gets fed by the algae on the shark, right? That's, again, it's a, it's a biological thing. Nature is supposed, like the bumblebee does its job so the flowers can grow so that, uh, and the spiders get fed, right? It, it's supposed to be a win-win. And I think what Kevin and I are really trying to bring to the table here is if it's not a consistent, sustainable, long-term win-win the only wrong answer is to just let that ride without questioning some things. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough conversation. It's a tough topic. The reason I like talking about it is because I've been through it. Same. And I understand how important it is to like decide in advance and say like, I don't want to just have a relationship. And if you listen to us, you know that I don't just want a life. I don't just want a podcast. I don't just want to speak. Like I want to be the best I can be. Right. And there's, that's the reason why I'm willing to face the feedback and try you know, to, to change as much as I can. Like, that's the only reason I'm the person I am. That's the only reason I have the relationship I have. Here's an example that people will really resonate with, I, I believe. I want to be a father. I know we have 35 seconds left on the clock. I want to be a father. And there's no question in my mind. I've always been pulled to that. Um, and I want to be the best possible father I can be. Naturally, when it comes to an intimate relationship, my radar is, does this person want children? And is she going to be an incredible mother? Okay. Emilia goes up tenfold when you look from that frame. So there's no right or wrong. Nobody's right or wrong. We're all unique. 
We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have goals and dreams and core values, but there is a right or wrong for you. And what was once right for you might not be anymore. And I think that that's really the, the thing is, is, is check in with that. Yeah. And be honest, right? Be honest because I think, and you said it, like, I think, yeah, there are some options there. You leave too early, you wait too long or things get fixed. No idea what the odds are. No idea what, you know, the chances are anything could happen, but I do think you're going to default one way or another. If you're afraid to be alone, you're going to stay in longer than you maybe longer than you should. If you're afraid to be caged, you're going to leave earlier than you, you know, you might think. Right. If you can put your logic and emotions together and figure out what's the best for you, I think you have the best chance. Um, mm-hmm. But again, anytime we're talking about the heart, it's, it's difficult. It's harder. If you're emotionally driven, try to bring in some logic, see, how, see what happens. Right. If you're logically driven, try to bring in some emotion and see, see what happens. Um, nothing grows on the fence. I think you know? the other thing too is like, you hear a lot of times people say like, oh, that was the best I ever had. That means you're the best, you were the best you ever were. I, I think that. Like if, again, if you want an extraordinary relationship, become an extraordinary partner. That's right. it. You want to be the best speaker in the world, become a better speaker. Right. And, and I think that some people, and I think we talked about this with a lot. I think we talked about this with Tori, with Maya Diamond, with Jennifer Hurwitz. I think we talked about this many times, but like some people have, I don't want to say unrealistic expectations, but like, I think it goes both ways you either don't give yourself enough credit or you think you should have what you want regardless of where you are. It's right. somewhere in the middle. <laughs> right. You have to drive to five. Drive you, have to five. To, you, have, you have to earn it. You have right. to earn it. Last, last words. Uh, I would ask you a, a question. So Kevin and I were on a mastermind. Thank you for everyone showing up on Memorial day. That'll you be will hear that next on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. Yes. And it was about intimate relationships. So if you're very fascinated by this and you do find yourself in this position of being on the fence, nothing grows on the fence. Okay, how do you get off the fence? And then how do you approach that? We, there's a lot of tactics in there that will help you. But my question for Kev is what I asked him on the mastermind, which is you were in a situation ship prior to Taryn. You have manifested your dream relationship. And I have as well. If you could go back to the version of Kevin that, that was settling for, not settling because the other person wasn't great, but because it wasn't right for you. What would you tell that person? That person, I would say the person that you want to be with is out there. But if you are settling, that means you're not growing. So you're not capable of getting them until you start growing again. Fire. That's what I would say. Like, I think you're capable of attracting into your life what you are. And I knew that I wasn't there yet. And I remember saying that, like, I got to level up first. You know, yeah. I, I think that's, I think we have to take some ownership of... And it's like, yeah, it sucks sometimes to say like, I'm not ready for that yet. Just because you feel ready doesn't mean you are ready. There's a difference between the two. Just, just because you're willing doesn't mean you're capable. And I think it's, it's checking in with yourself. I love talking about relationships. Dude, you know, that's so oh. fire. No, those right, are we fire gotta, quotes. We got to get out of here. Yeah, save them so I can put them on a, on a meme. <laughs> <next to myself. laughs> um, so the Kevin. website, if you're listening to this, it is Friday. The website is live and brand new. Tiffany Wells, shout out to her. She hammered it. So head on over to the new website. We have some new things. Hashtag join hyperconscious nation is still at the top of the page. For those of you who are not in our private Facebook group, our numbers, of, I think we've gone up like 30 or so in the last like week, week and a half. It's been fire. We appreciate you guys. People are sharing. They're telling their stories. We're chatting every day. So if you are looking for a group of like-minded individuals, that is a place to do it. And uh, the link for the mastermind, is going to be in there every week. So you will know where to go. So every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kevin and myself and or Kevin, myself and a featured guest will be live. Even if it's just us, we're going to be there. We've had great turnouts lately. I think our highest was 32 people. I think our lowest was probably 15. And we've, we're on week seven. Week eight is next week, Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have people, one of our, uh, who's become a close friend of ours, one of our regulars, Brought, on, brought in their two sons to listen in. Yeah. And it made me the happiest. So I'm noticing the impact of that mastermind so far beyond us. It's pretty magnificent. And if you want more results in your life, you want more growth, you want more connection, you want more love, this is the place for you. 
if you want a place to learn and grow, but also to connect with like-minded people, this is the place. And don't jump off yet. So coming up next on Sunday, we are lucky enough to sit down with the one and only Dr. Jen Esker at DocGenFit on Instagram. This episode was basically all about self-love, like self-exploration, healing, forgiveness, a lot of like internal work. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk about because you see the outside results of what Jen has. Mm. That is a result of what she is doing in terms of her inner work. Fire episode. Again, I always say it, one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, she's amazing. The last thing I'll say real quick is Doc Jen, she's, she went through a tough time and it was a tough breakup. And she goes deep into that and what she did about it. And now she manifested her dream relationship, just like Kevin and myself have done. Right. So I think that's a really good next episode to listen to if you resonated with any of this. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this. And Alan, myself, and Doc Jen Fit will talk to you on Sunday. Sunday. Talk soon. Bye.